What's good everyone on today's video we are looking at the New Balance 1080 version 11 versus the Ultra Boost 21. Full disclosure, I purchased both of these shoes with my own money. No one is paying me to make this video and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. With well, that said, these are two pretty comparable shoes. Well, I guess except in the weight department. So that's where we're gonna start. Before I sat down to do this review, I did run two very similar runs in both of these shoes. I put in 10.17 miles in the New Balance 1080 version 11, and I put 10.12 miles in the Ultra Boost 21. Now I've had this shoe a bit longer, so I've run considerably more miles in it, but I gave both a good chance to show me what they have before I sat down to tell you about it. New Balance claims that this 1080 version 11 weighs 9.3 ounces or 263 grams. The Ultra Boost 21 weighs in at 12 ounces or 340 grams. As I've said in the past, these stats mean absolutely nothing to me because I wear a men's size 13 in the US, 12 in the UK. In my size, the 1080 version 11 weighs in at 11.4 ounces or 324 grams. And in my size, the Ultra Boost 21 weighs in at 15.8 ounces or 448 grams. Back height is pretty similar with both these bad boys. The 1080 V11 has 30 millimeters in the heel, 22 millimeters in the forefoot, making it an eight millimeter drop. The Ultra Boost 21 has 30.5 millimeters in the heel, 20.5 millimeters in the forefoot, making it a 10 millimeter drop. Let's talk about the upper. The New Balance 1080 version 11 has a breathable soft knit upper, which is specifically engineered to give you a little more room when you need it. It's supposed to stretch strategically around your foot. And without any evidence to disprove that claim, I found it to be pretty accurate. It was very comfortable, especially around my toes. The Ultra Boost 21 uses a prime knit upper. Now that's prime blue. And now that's claimed they use 50% poly ocean plastics to make the upper. Basically, you are single-handedly saving the environment by buying the shoe. We'll get to the cost on saving the environment in just a few minutes. The 1080 version 11 does have a more traditional tongue. It is gusseted, so it is tied to the inside of the shoe, which really helps with a lockdown across the forefoot. You can see here, it's very simple. We've only got this one New Balance N overlay. It just gives a little structure to the midfoot area, so when you tie your laces, it locks down nicely. I really chose the right color in the shoe. The red is absolutely gorgeous, and it comes back into kind of the heel collar, which is, it's almost, feels like a structured neoprene. Anyway, it's very nice. Very nice to look at. Feels nice on the foot. The Ultra Boost 21 is more like a booty. It's more like sliding your foot into a sock. But the tongue is part of everything which comes around the heel collar. We have these big bulky plastic cages on the side which actually contribute to the lockdown across the midfoot. The laces are tied right into them. So when you pull them together, you get a nice lockdown feel across your midfoot. 1080 version 11 features this flared heel collar, which takes any pressure off your Achilles tendon. It also looks aerodynamic, which is going to contribute to making you a faster run. The heel collar is very thin. There is absolutely no extra material around this heel collar. And while you may think, well, isn't that going to rub when I'm running? I didn't find that to be the case. This was extremely comfortable. The heel counter is very rigid. It's almost like there is a piece of plastic that comes up to about here on the heel counter. And when you squeeze it, you can just about feel it in there. It just gives the shoe a very dialed in fit. Now, something I did notice when I was running in this shoe was that when you're not running, you can almost feel something in the back. So you're gonna put your foot in and then I was feeling something on the back of my heel or it almost felt like my heel wasn't sitting down in the heel cup enough. Do you know what I'm saying? It's kind of irrelevant though, because as soon as I started running, it went away and I didn't notice it. The Ultra Boost 21 has this, this plastic. It comes all the way around all the way around with a nice Ultra Boost logo on there. And that just gives some real structure to the heel counter. Again, we've got this flared bit right at the end, obviously contributing to aerodynamics, making this potentially a very fast shoe, at least according to the flared heel collar. Now the heel collar around the outside is not padded except in strategic places. So instead of just pouring all the padding in all the way around. If you look carefully, you can see the padding in strategic little pads around the outside. Obviously, it's only where you exactly need it. I found my heel fit very nicely once it was in and the laces were tied. I haven't experienced heel slip in either of these shoes. So obviously they're both doing something right, albeit very differently. Let's talk about bulkiness for a second, because I would say both of these shoes could be considered bulky. We have a 30 millimeter stack height on the heels, which is, is just not small. However, the 1080 version 11 kind of takes that bulkiness and makes it a little smoother. It just, it's very light relative to its size. The Ultra Boost 21 
feels as heavy as it looks. So as far as overall comfort goes, I'm gonna give these shoes a very similar rating, but the winner has to be the 1080 version 11 because as soon as I put my foot into this shoe, it was comfortable. When I put my foot into the Ultra Boost 21, I did find there was a little pinching across the top and I kind of had to adjust the top of this little booty sock. It would be called the tongue on this shoe, but seeing as this doesn't have a tongue, it's kind of like the top of the sock fit. I found I had to adjust it in order to stop it from pinching the top of my foot. And if I didn't, there was an ongoing pressure point. As far as midsole, New Balance has brought back their Fresh Foam X and for good reason, this foam just works. It is a modern EVA and it is comfortable and responsive. Comfortable because we have this enormous stack height making it a very plush ride, but it's not too plush. The shoe responds well to higher speeds. The Adidas Ultra Boost 21 is using Boost and this year, this year it's got 6% more boost than it did last year. But I'm not quite sure about the 6% extra boost in this iteration of the shoe. I'm not sure it does anything because we can see here that the stack height is very high and it's actually not that high. Your foot sits in and goes below the midsole. So the midsole kind of wraps around your heel. Onto the outsole, the 1080 version 11 does have six pieces of strategically placed blown rubber. All the white stuff is the exposed EVA foam. Having the different pieces just allows for more flexibility in the shoe. And you can see here, it is very flexible. That flexibility makes the shoe feel very good when running. The Ultra Boost 21 uses continental rubber, so you are gonna get plenty of miles out of this shoe. However, it also incorporates their new LEP torsion system. LEP stands for Linear Energy Push. And basically, it makes the shoe 15% stiffer. So you're not gonna get that same bend in the shoe, but Adidas isn't going for that. They want it to be stiffer so you get more pop at toe off. And I have to say, it does really work. For a shoe of this weight, it does feel deceptively lighter. And I do put it down to that lip torsion system on the bottom. Let's talk about price. The New Balance 1080 version 11 comes in at $150. The Adidas Ultra Boost 21 comes in at $180. So this is $30 more than the New Balance 1080 version 11, which makes sense. This shoe weighs a lot more. It must cost a lot more to make. So if you guys had the choice of both of these shoes, which should you choose? Well, if you are an Adidas aficionado, I am not gonna turn your head away from the Ultra Boost 21. It is almost a classic. It also has a big following of fashion footwear users. The New Balance 1080 version 11, well, it's on version 11. So it is also somewhat of a classic. If you ran in the version 10 of this shoe, you will not be disappointed. It is very similar to the version 10. New Balance just made some updates to the upper, which were pretty good updates. This shoe certainly feels better than the last iteration. However, if you're not a New Balance person or an Adidas person, I would recommend that you go for the New Balance. This shoe is more of an all-rounder. It's got the padding, it's got the softness for you to go out and log long miles. It's also got the weight, or lack thereof, for you to pick up the pace when you need to. I would class the Ultra Boost 21 as a recovery shoe only. Like when you're gonna be going out and you're tired and you just want cushion and you're not worried about pace, you might pick up the Ultra Boost 21. Whereas the New Balance 1080 version 11 is more of a jack of all trades. You can grab this for your long run, you can grab this for your tempo run, and anything in between. Probably wouldn't grab this shoe if I was gonna go blast a 5K race, but if I had nothing else, this would serve the purpose. If you could only have one shoe, this would actually be the ticket. That's actually pretty high praise for this shoe. My friends, thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. If you like or run in either of these shoes, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. New videos twice a week. As always, be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.